Hi, it's Jerry Corley, founder of the Stand Up Comedy Clinic, standupcomedyclinic.com, here with another episode of Ask the Joke Doctor. This is where you get to sort of tweet your questions dealing with stand up, comedy writing, performance technique to my Twitter feed, at Joke Doctor, with the hashtag Ask the Joke Doctor. So, this actual uh, question comes from a guy, uh, his name is uh, Alan S. Comedy. He said, Joke Doctor, how can I internalize my material so it doesn't sound like I'm reading it on stage? I sound like a bad actor. I hate the word internalize, man. Inter how can I internalize this? It sounds like some acting teacher came up with this phrase a long time ago, internalize your material. And all the other actor acting teachers jumped on because it sounded like some sort of a, a great sound bite. You know, and internalize. It's like reach out to you. Hey, let's think outside the box. Some of those uh, corporate cliches, you know. So if you really think about the word internalize and you think about what comedians do on stage, on stage we don't internalize. We actually, at bet, we externalize, really. That's kind of our goal, right? Our goal is to try to get out to people, just try to be vulnerable to people, be open to people. Internalize sounds so counterintuitive to what we actually do as comics. One of the, you know, there's a couple of problems that comedians have with regard to making them sound natural on stage. First of all, lack of practice is one. Um, the goal at first, when you're first starting to do comedy, is try to be the guy you are at the bars, right? But try to be the guy you are with your friends hanging out. You know, well, who's that guy? You know, if you can be that guy and be open and be present and in the moment and, and just deliver and be open to every little inspiration and piece of motivation that hits you while you're talking. When you're talking, every night, even if you're doing the same material, inflections should change, right? Because if you're actually in the moment, you're reacting how the audience is reacting to you. So comedy is a conversation. It's a one-sided conversation, but it's a conversation. So one of the first things I think anybody should do is to make sure they're having a conversation with the audience, not reciting material. Because once you start reciting material, the game's over, right? So if you actually find yourself reciting material, you got to stop and go, wow, I feel like I'm reading a joke, right? Right to the audience. You got to be present and in the moment. The beauty of stand-up is that you have to be in the moment. And if you're not in the moment, the audience is going to feel it. So one of the things absolutely for certain to know is whatever state the performer is in, the audience is in. So the performer can actually dictate the mood of the audience. We have that kind of power because most of the people there are at some sort of level of suspension of disbelief. They're there to have fun. They're there to participate. And every comedian that comes up, we kind of take on their demeanor. If you're nervous and you're trying to hide it and you don't admit it, the audience gets nervous. Have you ever seen this happen? That's where big guys tend to heckle, you know? Because if you're nervous, the audience is feeling kind of a nervousness too. So they're going, oh man, I feel weird. What is all that? And then they lash out, right? You suck. I feel better. That's kind of how that kind of works. So if you're in the moment talking to the audience or holding that conversation, then you don't have to worry about whether the material sounds pat or not, or read or not, or recited or not. Because if you're actually literally in the moment and sort of experiencing the material rather than just saying the material, then you're already one, uh, you got one leg up. So Think about communicating it to them like you're telling your friends at the bar. I mean, what would be wrong with getting on stage and going, oh, shit, I got to tell you guys this, because, man, shit has been happening. Uh, so yesterday, right, and it's just like being open and being vulnerable and in the moment. Here's what you need to do. Number one, see the pictures, man. See the pictures. Smell the, smell the smells. Feel the textures of the story you're telling. If you're not seeing the pictures of the story you're telling, you're not in the story. You're not trying to convey the story. And if you're not conveying the images and the story and the textures and the smells, then the audience isn't with you. The audience is not compelled. If you're feeling that, the audience is feeling that. And I do, I was listening to your material and I got that you were sharing those stories. You were seeing the pictures. You were seeing that car you pulled over with the dudes who were smoking pot. I saw the smoke coming out of the car as you were explaining it. So I, it didn't feel to me that you were in your head. You know, live the material a little, a little better, you know, enjoy it. And the only thing, only suggestion I would have based on 
what I heard was at the beginning, enunciate, articulate your phrases, the little transitionary phrases leading into material. We're going kind of fast, so they got kind of swallowed, if you will. And at the end, especially the last joke, that closing joke you did, got a laugh from the audience, but on the video side, the listener side, I couldn't understand what that last word was, so I couldn't hear it. And what happened is there's two or three occurrences in that five minute video where you dropped off the ends of phrases. Do you know what I'm saying? We're like, um, so, uh, you know, I'm Irish and American Indian, so you know what that means? I pretty much have VIP seats waiting for me. And you didn't know what I said because I mumbled it or I dropped off the end of the phrase. Usually when you drop off the end of your phrase, it indicates that you're not necessarily confident with that joke or where that joke's going. That's why we usually drop off the ends of phrases because we're not confident. Even if you're not confident, play that phrase through with, the, with your emotional intent. How do you feel about the joke? Play that through that joke. It's like, you know what? My ex who cheated on me, she called me on Halloween. She was like, Jerry, I don't know what to pretend to be for Halloween. And I was like, Jerry, well, why don't you just dress normally and pretend you're in a committed relationship? You see, you're playing through the attitude of, you know, kind of that uh, sarcasm with your ex who cheated on you by having her dress like she always dresses and pretending she's in a committed relationship with an attitude, because that's how I would deliver it to her. Not as like a joke, but as a, has me having the conversation with her. So it's one of the things I learned in acting class. It was like, um, Jerry, play, play through the jokes, even if you don't believe in them. You know, doing a sitcom acting class, some of that material seemed lame to me. And the teacher actually said, you don't believe in the material, do you? You don't think this is funny? I said, no, not really. He says, uh, it's really not that bad. Just play through that emotion, and you'll see that it's OK. And I did, and wow, did, was he right. It totally changed the tone of the material. So that's one thing I would do, is make sure you're expressing yourself through the material. You know, another great piece of advice I got, one of the best pieces of advi advice I got with stand-up was, again, from an acting teacher. She had me do five minutes when I started to do stand-up years and years ago and for the class, for our acting class. And this is one of the top acting teachers in New York. And she was like, uh, Jerry, um, I want you to come in and do five minutes. So I did. And I got laughs with the, uh, with the, with the, the class. And uh, she sat there with her arms folded. And she goes, oh, look, Jerry thinks his jokes are so clever, he doesn't need to perform them. And I was like, whoa, whoa, what do you mean by that? And she was like, well, I don't feel any emotion in any of those jokes, so I don't care. I go, so what do you mean? What should I do? She goes, I want you to take your jokes home. I want you to take your material home. And I want you to identify how you feel about each of those things. What is the situation? What's going on? How do you feel? And I want you to come back and play that emotion through everyone. And play the emotion through that's for each one of those lines and how you feel for each one of those lines. And I went home and I practiced that. And I came back night and day. What a difference in how the material played. Because if you think about it, human beings connect through emotions. Words are almost superfluous. So the words may communicate an idea, but it doesn't under indicate how connected you are to that material. Dude, and through your character, man, you got so many stories to tell. And you do sound connected to the material. All you have to do is remember those stories, see the pictures, smell the smells, feel the textures, and those emotions will convey through the story. You're two years in, and I really enjoyed the five minutes I watched. There could have been some more laugh points in certain places, but it really wasn't bad. There were some good laughs in there, good solid laughs. But I hope this, uh, this little bit helped uh, get you to that point, man. You're on the right track from what I see, and I think it's like just Make sure you're seeing those pictures as you're telling those stories, and the audience will see the pictures too. Maybe not exactly your pictures, but a version of your pictures. It's uncanny. If you're really clearly in the story, they will be too, and it'll change the nature and the total way you feel about your approach. Don't be afraid to be vulnerable and show your emotions during this. You know, It's a, it's a great start. You're off to a great start, man. And I hope this helped. Again, if you have any questions, uh, hit me up on uh, Twitter at Joke Doctor, and hashtag Ask the Joke Doctor, and I'll be happy to answer questions you might have.